Hello, welcome back to The Upshot. My name's Jack Rivlin. I'm joined by Zach. Hi, Jack. Right. Hello, mate. We found an even more boring background to yeah. sit in front of. <laughs> Today on The Upshot, <laughs> we are discussing how a dick pic triggered Ajax's demise, 50 Cent grabs a slice of the Welsh football pie, and it's tears before bedtime for Andy Murray. Uh, quick bit of news before we dive in. We're not going to be releasing any videos for the next couple of weeks, so apologies to those who will be missing us, but we will be back in, a, in November. Yeah. yeah. See you in November after mm -hmm. this. But first, Zach, do you want to kick us off with Ajax? Yeah, so we're going to start off with Ajax, so the Dutch giant. So you'll probably remember in 2019, they made it to the Champions League semi-finals. Yeah. They had this, this epic game against Tottenham where Lucas Moura scored a hat-trick in the, the second leg to, to knock them out. But they were, at that point, Everyone was like heralding them as this like model club, you know, you know this like winning mentality and culture of uh, youth development and everything. Uh, but this season, they find themselves in the in the relegation zone in the Eredivisie. Um, they're 19 points already behind PSV, who are leading. So you're probably wondering what happened, what's what's caused this demise. Um, and to explain that, I'll take you back to one rainy afternoon in 2020 when Arsenal legend Mark Overmars, who was the sporting director, um, dropped his pants in the toilets of uh, an Ajax office building and took a dick pic and fired it off to one of his Ajax colleagues. Um, and this resulted in him, <laughs> right, quite, quite rightly, <laughs> being sacked. Um, and there were other allegations of of uh, sexual harassment from other female members of staff. Um, it also came out that at Ajax, his, um, his nickname was Gael Neef, which means horny cousin. Uh, and they, they also called him Dirty Uncle Mark. Um, <laughs> well, because he was so, such a perv. Yeah, he was. He's, is, he's, is Gael Neef grim, grim is, is like a common Dutch, like horny I cousin? Mean, is that a thing or is uh, it like a... I don't know. Did they, did they create it? Just yeah. I don't know. If any if Dutch they, if viewers any before, watching, yeah, enlighten us yeah. in the comments. Either, either, way, it's, either way, it's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so since then, Ajax have kind of been on a bit of a downward spiral. So they'd won four consecutive titles at that point. Um, last season, they finished third. And this season, obviously, they're in the relegation zone, which for Ajax is they're, they're kind of a bit like the Bayern Munich, I guess, of the yeah. Netherlands. They're like the, the, the big historic team. Um, and understandably this hasn't gone down very well with their fans um so a few weeks ago they had a it was the derby not a derby actually it's the, the big rivalry they were playing against final to the big team from rotterdam and they, those two they hate each other mm. um and in the first half this was at ix's stadium and after 37 minutes they were three nil down to fire um and the fans just kicked off completely and ended up throwing um flares onto the pitch to get the game suspended which it eventually did um and after the game like all the all the fans were on their way out of the stadium there were basically kind of riots or low-key riots and some of the um supporters broke back into the stadium like kicked through the doors of uh Jeez. some kind of like vip lounge welcome lounge or something and like trashed it yeah um but it does seem there's, there's kind of been a bit of an epidemic of this in uh in Dutch football, um, so uh, I think eight teams in the past couple of years have had matches abandoned due to to hooliganism. There's, eight, yeah, yeah. So there was a game last season between Ajax and Groningen where uh, Groningen fans uh, like invaded the pitch and threw flares on. I think in protest against their owners or something. But right. it's really just like kicking off. And yeah. you probably remember last season um, West Ham played AZ Alkmaar in the semi-final I think of the, the conference league and at the end of the game the Alkmaar fans like stormed a uh, stand where the West Ham fans were and the only thing that saved the West Ham fans was Nolsey this uh, like West Ham ultra who yeah. who like single-handedly fought off, fought off. Um, is he the one who gets his shirt ripped yeah yeah so, the, so there's this like famous picture of him 
like black eye and shirt ripped, yeah. which they, they actually made into a doll. You could buy a nosy doll. <laughs> With um, ripped shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. yeah, he was like kind of swinging over the fences, wasn't he? Just Was he at the top of a set of stairs or something? I think so, yeah. So they were trying to get up to the just, stairs into the, into picking to get off. the fans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then also uh, last week, I think it was, uh, Feyenoord um, were playing Atletico Madrid in the Champions League and the fans apparently before arranged this fight in the forest, which like different ultras groups sometimes do, uh, which is like, it's pretty grim anyway. Um, then at the, at the game as well, afterwards, the final fans like stormed an area of, um, it's like a VIP area of the Atletico. Jeez, so again, same idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. Is that their like calling card now as they storm the VIP? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of prefer that to attacking innocent away fans. Yeah, like, take it out kids, on your yeah, yeah. <laughs> the blazers. Take it out on the blazers. Take it out on the blazers. <laughs> take it out on Mark Overmars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe another one for our Dutch fans. What is in the yeah. what's in the water? And it's weird because I think in English football there's this temptation to think that our um, fans in the last few years have been uniquely awful. Like there was. A, Stuff at the Euros final. There's been a few other like incidents, mm. but actually, if you look abroad, yes. you know France as well. They've had a few games abandoned and some pretty yeah. like mental stuff going on. I say England is, is yeah pretty vanilla. Better, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously, notwithstanding the England fan who uh, put the flare up his bum and <laughs> did, did a huge yeah. rail of coke <laughs> in front of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Which you know, I, I guess is just uh, yeah. That's all. That's all harmless fun. Though, it's yeah. He's it? not harming anyone else, yeah, is he? Yeah. God knows what state his bum's in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, is, is that a Dutch foot? Is what Netherlands now like are they the pariahs of European football? Yeah, I don't know. It does seem to be pretty pretty mad. I reckon it spreads. We saw it a yeah. bit in German football at times as well, which again you don't think of as being nasty. Mm. But do you remember Schalke? They got relegated and their, they got relegated during an away game and the players came back on the bus and the bus dropped them at the ground and there was a pack of ultras waiting for mm, them mm. and they chased the players off the coach. They were chasing them with fireworks. Yeah. One of the players got in a car chase with the Lebanese mafia. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember why. But Big Schalke fans. Yeah, yeah well, I think they are. Yeah. I can't remember the exact details of that, but that was a, an aspect was of it the story. It was the local branch of the Lebanese mafia. As yeah, to, yeah, I don't think it's the Beirut out there. Over from Beirut. From just head to, office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. They, was... they drew with Van der <laughs> Get next fight. Better get out there. <laughs> but so I think, and there did. There were like ripples of that through the Bundesliga of like oh, really yeah. outrageous fans. Mm. Although actually, Schalke also have our favourite fan ever, who's the Schalke fan who posed when they got promoted the season yeah. after, just completely naked. I think he's just <laughs> with a scarf. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, right. So it's wild in the Netherlands. We'll keep keep tabs on the that. Netherlands. And I'm all there. down to. I don't, I don't know if I quite buy the argument that Mark Overmars is responsible <laughs> for this epidemic. I mean, he did many awful things in that yeah. role. <laughs> Unforgivable yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? <laughs> who knows what would have happened if he hadn't dropped his pants that day? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, what else is going on? <laughs> yeah, so speaking of uh, epidemics of nauseating behaviour in football, uh, you've probably been following this trend of American celebs getting involved in uh, in British football. So you've obviously got Ryan Reynolds and Rob McIlhenny um, investing in Wrexham. You've got Tom Brady at Birmingham. Um, and 50 Cent, the uh, American rapper, saw all this and decided he wanted a slice of the pie. But you might have been following that um, over the last few years, 50 Cent has been struggling a little bit. So he somehow squandered a like $500 million fortune and <laughs> had to file for bankruptcy. Um, but, you know, that didn't put him off. He really wanted to get involved in, uh, in, in British football and he spent every penny he could afford. And he's now the proud sponsor of AFC Romney girls under 14 team. <laughs> <laughs> So they're just um, wearing his name yeah, on so their shirt. On their, on their kit, they've got 50 cent. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think he I think he paid for their kit, which is probably just about as much as he can yeah. afford right now. Get, get Rumney or die try. Yeah. <laughs> just trying to think of about a 50 cent pump. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's quite sweet, really. G-U-Net. Um, yeah. what, <laughs> that was a Welsh accent, by the way. <laughs> well, uh, what is the actual chain of events that has led to him sponsoring them, though? So apparently there was uh, one of the dads of... One of the kids on the on the team uh, was working on Fifty Cent's tour, and um, at some point must have just had had the idea to ask him, and he was up for it. So. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Respect that. Yeah. Good of him. Yeah. Is it? Is, do you think this is just a bit of fun for him, or is it? 
Do you think he wants to take them to the Premier League? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An under 14s yeah. women's side. I don't know, take them to the take WSL. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rodney, yeah. remember yeah. the name. Yeah. I, to yeah. be honest, it's quite a nice antidote to like the more cynical... Like for example, everyone's saying Tom Brady owns Birmingham, and that's why Rooney's gone there. Tom Brady does not own Birmingham. He's not even a like major shareholder. Oh, really? They've obviously just given him a tiny amount of shares in the club in exchange for saying mm. that he's buying them to market the club to American fans in the way Wrexham have. Mm. It's really cynical. So prefer Fiddy's approach of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm all for it. I'm yeah, for it. Yeah. Yeah. Excited to see where that yeah. goes. All yeah. right. Here's uh, a more unsavoury character for you. Billy Joe Saunders. I consider him a bit of a scumbag. Mm. Possibly the biggest scumbag in boxing at the moment, which is saying mm. something. I think he's actually officially retired. Officially the biggest scumbag. <laughs> officially the biggest scumbag. <laughs> I don't want to get into too it's much of his... About. I won't get into his scumbaggery now, but look him up. He's horrible. However, he did tell a pretty funny story this week regarding Andy Murray. At the 2008 Olympics, Andy Murray landed in Beijing. He was obviously pretty knackered. Um, you know, he'd been training hard, he was jet lagged, he presumably had to deal with his mum's endless lectures. You know what she's like. And uh, Andy had retired to his room in the Olympic Village. He had a big first round match the day after. And about midnight, he heard a knock on his door and it was none other than Billy Joe Saunders at the door. Billy Joe told the story this week. And uh, Saunders was, you know, hyped up on Red Bull and, and the fact he was at his first Olympics, he was only 18. And he, he says to Andy Murray, do you fancy a quick game of PlayStation? Quick game of FIFA? Mm. He's like clutching FIFA under his arm. <laughs> and Andy Murray's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I've got an opening game of the Olympics tomorrow. Mm. Get out, slams the door in his face. And so Billy Joe's kind of telling the story as a quite a funny memory, like, oh, I was so naive. But what he omitted to mention in his account is that Murray lost the next day mm. to the world number 70, a Taiwanese guy whose name escapes me, apologies. Um, and that was it. That was the end of his Olympics. And apparently Murray, for years after, this was like a real sore point for him that he'd lost this game. Even after he'd won an Olympic title, he then had a rematch with this guy just by chance, in the, I think at Wimbledon. And Murray said, like, this is a really important thing for me. Mm. So, yeah, cheers, Billy Joe. For... Does, he blame, does he blame Billy no, Joe? No, no. I mean, I, Andy Murray's probably too dignified yeah. to ever say that. Yeah. but um, Probably it didn't help. Yeah, still not Billy Joe's worst crime. But anyway, yeah, it can't have helped. I don't think it probably did cost him the game. Couldn't sleep after that. So yeah, that's a nice blast from the past for you. Um, Couple of clips for you. Time wasting has become a sort of intricate art where people pretend to be barking complex instructions. Players have got really good at writhing on the ground in agony to act like they're injured. But sometimes you just want to go route one with your time wasting, like Dan Batty of York City. His side were leading in the 97th minute. And so, with a free kick, he decided, I'm just going to boot this as hard as I can out of the ground. Like that. That's, yeah, yeah. Why, why mess around? Yeah, exactly. Back to basics. Really appreciate that. Um, and one other thing for Do you. you think they only had one ball? Was that the... Yeah, I was thinking. I was like, how effective is that bit of time wasting? Because surely there's just another ball nearby. Yeah, yeah. So it's only wasting. Yeah, although I remember a few years ago, they, uh, there was this like rule change in the Premier League or something where they decided to start using like, a multi-ball system. Um, which I was seeing that and being like, oh, wait, hold on a second. Were we, were we not already yeah. on the multi system? Like, did we just have the one? Yeah, I think, I, think, I think what they meant was that up, up to that point, they did continue playing with the same ball, unless obviously the ball got lost. They did have spares, but they'd try, like, they'd try, and, they'd try and keep the same ball, whereas they change it now. now so just like, get a ball who, whichever the closest one is. So Maybe they, Dan Batty uh, had weaponised the ball boys like Mourinho. Do you remember, Maybe, remember that yeah. Spurs game where the ball yeah. boy quickly recycles it and they score? Mm. And also you get the ball boys who refuse to give the ball back mm. to the opposition. Mm. Mm. Like, do you remember that kid who did it to Aiden Hazard? Yeah. And Hazard stamped on him. Yeah. Weirdly, that kid now runs like a 40 million vodka company. Yeah. Which I think looks a bit suspect. But anyway, separate yeah. point. <laughs> him and Eden Hazard have got in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought oh, we, it? Yeah, who retired this week? <laughs> yeah, Aiden Hazard. Farewell. Yeah. Probably got some stories about him we could do soon. Mm. Um, all right, finally, Zach, we've had a bit of fan mail. Yeah, we have. Well, yes. I'll, I'll call it fan mail. <laughs> um, it's actually um, an item from, I think it's, it's from a Man United fanzine. We think it's United We Stand. It was sent in by Kareem. Thanks, mate. Um, I'll, I'll read it out for you. Yeah, please do. It says, There's plenty who smell blood when Man United are struggling because it's good for their business. A couple of double-barreled twats from the upshot were laughing at Jaden Sancho's <laughs> current predicament in a proper sneering ya 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 way for their YouTube channel. If it gets you some clout, eh? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, they've cracked us. We are part of the uh, the big media agenda against Man United. Well, I'm just in it for clout, whereas yeah. you're in it to take Man United <laughs> from the downside. But what we have in common is we're yeah. double barreled twats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Guilty. I don't know who, who wrote it, but given there's, you know, sub 1,000 people watching these videos, there's yeah. a good chance you're watching this one as well. So appreciate the exposure. <laughs> yeah. um, we're not out to get you, but yeah, yeah point taken. Yeah. We like all fan mail, so... <laughs> <laughs> Keep it coming. Put us in your fancy, yeah. slagging us off. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's all we've got time for. Yep. Alas, we won't see you for a couple of weeks, but thanks for watching. Please still hit subscribe because we will be back mm. with more. With a vengeance. <laughs> with a vengeance. <laughs> Looking for that clout. Yeah. Cheers. All right, thanks.